Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Marketing and Leadership Series with Kevin and Craig, where we add value to people's lives, happening every Thursday on ebizradio.com. You can catch the Lunchtime Series on all major podcast channels. And joining me, as per usual, our marketing and communications expert, Craig Page Lee. How are you doing, Craig? I'm well, Kevin. Yeah, thanks. Gosh, um, the the weeks are just flying by. I can't believe this is, <laughs> you know, I think we've got two more to go and we would have hit our 50th 50th recording yeah it's uh you know when you when you think of it in terms of that it's it's you and i have seen each other every single week for the last 50 weeks kind of thing well uh, yeah yeah yep. Of, yeah yep that's it's, in, it's in fact in fact today's recording is the 49th i'm, I'm just looking at at the way i I've, I've titled my folders it's the 49th so next week actually we're gonna have a really great show next week with a with a guest and yes, we're, we're going to have wine. Our, I hope, yes, yes. And we're going to celebrate <laughs> our, our 50th show. So, you know, um, let's let's make it a good one. Absolutely. I'll definitely, I'll have some wine here and make sure that we, we, we do it in a, in a good way. But, uh, you know, Craig, I, I was just thinking now that <laughs> I've spent more time with you than I have with some of my family members. <laughs> 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 yeah, just heard <to> that. <laughs> uh, it must. Uh, it must be. A, it's a good thing because we we're having fun doing it. Yeah, right? we are. We are, and, and we're just covering such a wonderful broad range of of topics, and just yeah, you know, in self enlightenment is, is as well as enlightenment for 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 our listeners. And it's just really great to be able to to have this at least entry level understanding of so many of the topics out there, so that when conversations do happen in the workplace and with clients, prospective clients, we've at least got something to add to the conversation and if yeah. need be we, we then know where the starting point is, is is to go and find deeper insights to to make it more meaningful absolutely so craig last week's discussion really got me thinking about how i you know take my leadership business into to to the metaverse the metaverse as as you call it um i know it's not a simple process but the, the, the more i learn about the topic it seems like it's a necessary it's it's becoming a necessary thing for for some brands yeah, Kevin, absolutely. Um, there's there's unquestionable no doubt about that. Um, what I'm curious about, though, is, is really to see how long it will be before one of the big global consulting firms actually starts to play in the space. So, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I constantly think of, of Accenture Interactive because for me, they're just the, the benchmark of, of a big, heavy behemoth consulting business that has innovated themselves and they've created the the Accenture Interactive um, proposition and they, they're they working with a collective of the best in class design, digital marketing and advertising agencies worldwide and, and imagine when they actually utilize that expertise and start building a metaverse that brings all of the communication capabilities and advertising opportunities to life in this world for all of their clients. Mm. And they Absolutely. they're dealing with, with with some real some real big clients around the world. So you know, and for for our listeners that don't know, um, Accenture Interactive is is a digital agency arm of, as I said, the behemoth of of Accenture, the global professional services firm. But more importantly, and this is really good for South Africa, is they acquired King James Group, which is one of South Africa's leading integrated agency groups. Um, and really great to see that that they seeing the South African creative world as an important add-on to their global proposition so incredibly well done to to the king james group and yeah i'm looking forward to seeing more of that yeah i mean i wasn't aware of that and i'll definitely keep a look out uh, on uh, in, you know out in news for for the king james group but craig uh, b before we get to today's topic um do you want to give us a key uh, some key reminder points of of last week's conversation about the uh, the metaverse yeah, so sort of six six key you know, key key points here, Kevin. Um, a metaverse is always active and it exists in real time. Okay, you you don't flip the switch and it disappears tonight, and you switch it on back again and it boots up. It's it's always there. It's a self-contained and fully functioning virtual universe, and and it generates user-generated content. It, it at least it contains user-generated content. Um, and and the three key attributes here is that. It needs to have presence. It's, it's, it's got to have that social presence, otherwise it won't exist. And it needs to be persistent. Users need to come back and there needs to be some kind of 
continuity. And as I mentioned, you, you can't reboot it. It just it evolves and evolves. And it needs to be shared. And, and multiple people need to be able to interact with it at any one point. And it's through those interactions that it continuously evolves and builds its, its future layers through, through that user-generated content. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's what's so fascinating. I, you know, I think we've only started really seeing the, the beginning of what the metaverse is going to be like. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm so excited about what it could offer eventually and, and you know, how we actually, uh, what are those jobs that are going to be created because of the metaverse? I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, and and it's a continuum for me. That's the yeah. exciting thing. It's a continuum, and and that means that we're always going to be intrigued to understand what the next step and next layer of evolution in the continuum is. Yeah. So with that said, and uh, moving on to today's show, what are we uh, going to be chatting about today, Craig? Right, Kevin. I, I mentioned last week that we're possibly going to have a special guest join us today. Our guest is is confirmed for next week, so I thought we could take a look at at, at another topic in in prep for next week. And and part of the intention to have a broader range of topics on on the show, including some conversations of leadership. So I thought we could look at leadership styles and the qualities that define great leaders, but then also see what are the characteristics or traits that 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 are evident in great advertising and creative agency leaders. And this is, you know, this is my, one of my passions. So 100%. I, I, <laughs> I'm glad that we're going to be talking about it. And just recently, I've actually put together a, a questionnaire. And I'm going to, um, I, you're going to have to listen to the whole show before I tell you about the questionnaire, but it's how to evaluate yourself as a leader. But oh, I'll wow. share that with you right at the end. So yeah. That's great. That's great. So as with every discussion we have, it's important to set some context the topic, but in this time, obviously, mm -hmm. leadership. And, and especially since the aspects driving and influencing leadership, Kevin, have fundamentally changed since the onset of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's let's start with a, with a broad broad look at some of those definitions. So start with the obvious, uh, Wiki, Wikipedia. And, and Wiki states that leadership, both as a research area and as a practical skill, encompasses the ability of an individual, group, or organization to lead, influence or guide others, individuals, teams, or entire organizations. So broad, broad stretch of, of, of uh, output. Yeah. Forbes.com tells us that leadership is a process of social influence, which maximizes the efforts of others towards the achievement of a goal. And that's, that's great. Um, that, that really is a nice, a nice definition. Yeah, yeah, what's interesting as well around leadership, Craig, um, being involved in it and working in sort of a lead, leadership space. Um, uh, I was mentioning that to Eugene last night. What, what, what's interesting about uh, a leader is when we look up at very successful leaders in the world, uh, we kind of go, ah, oh, that's probably what that looks like or what that feels like. And it's like, ah, oh. but when you get to a leadership space and you kind of are the leader in an environment and you're starting to do it, it's a very different space. It's a very different feeling that's yeah. that's connected to it. So, and when it says that social influence, uh, it really is, um, you know, one of the key attributes to leadership is is how do I build relationships with humans? You know, and like people. The COVID has, has really advanced mm. that. And and as much as we just so drain from webinars and Google Meets and Teams and Zoom Meets, the, the reality is it has brought leaders much closer to their teams than ever before, Kevin. Yeah. Um, and, and that means that leadership in itself has to take on a very different behavioral aspect. But the beauty about it is it's broad access, leaders access to people that they've not had access to and vice versa. And that's, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, but, but there's really one great definition that stood out for me through all of this, Kevin. It's one that was published uh, on TonyRobbins.com. And, and as many of our listeners know, Tony Robbins is that great American motivational speaker and life coach. And, and he runs quite a diversified group of businesses that focus on, to quote from the website, preaching a gospel of self-improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the definition reads as follows, two paragraphs. So he states that, Leadership is the ability to inspire a team to achieve a certain goal. It's usually discussed in the context of business, 
But leadership is also how you as an individual choose to lead your life, important point. The definition of leadership is to influence, to inspire, and to help others become their best selves, building their skills and achieving goals along the way. You don't have to be a CEO, a manager, or even a team leader to be a leader. That's great. Leadership is a set of skills and a certain psychology that anyone can master. And, and really, that's, that's one of the, the, the favorite statements in, in the paragraph for me. But it goes on to say this, that, that leadership is not a zero-sum equation. When one per person harnesses the power to lead, it strengthens the leadership opportunities of the other. So rather than diminishing that, it's actually an opportunity to empower others to become effective leaders as well. So, so this is the way that many iconic leaders have, have become incredible mentors that they cite for their success. So they looked up, found a mentor, that mentor as a leader has helped them become a leader, great relationship there, and now them in the new leadership position is an enabler for other people to, to be drawn up uh, uh, with them. So, yeah, quite a mouthful, but, but a really compelling and, and inspiring conversation starter at, at that. Craig, as well, you know, I think what, what really stands out about this to me is that people, when people look at leadership as, as, as the topic leadership, they always put it as a, a, a position someone else has. You know, it, and, and it's to the point that everyone has the psychological ability to have leadership. And leadership is actually a skill that can be cultivated. And that's what's the beauty of it. That's what we do. You know, we have the leadership programs we have are the effective personal leadership programs based on the fact that it's a set of rules, habit formed processes that that um, history, you know, and the evidence of what leadership shows up like really pushes through. And by having those set of behaviors and it becoming part and parcel of your actual characteristic makeup, that in itself is leadership. Leadership is not being the boss of the of the business. You know, it's not it's not the manager. That's not leadership. That's that's a whole different other thing. Yeah, leadership is a great. quality, and it's a skill that you can actually cultivate. But I mean, having having spent many years um, um, guiding business leaders through through change programs, the one thing I'm I'm aware of is that uh, there is a distance, uh, a distinct difference in leadership styles. And that each change intervention I work on requires a dis uh, distinct approach and solution. With this in mind, can you give us some thoughts on the different types of leadership? And because uh, there are so many, and uh, they are quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, and and it's good that you that you pick up on that and, and say that you know it, it it is something that that you experience every day in a different way with with the businesses that that you take through these change programs. So I found a lot of great content on, 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 on this particular question, but I came across a really straightforward and simple to understand uh, blog. Firstly, the, the Unisquare Concepts blog. And, and there's a simple article, great article, Top Leadership Styles and Qualities of Great Leaders. Um, and it was in the Work Life section, it was, it was published on the 23rd of May. And the, and the article opens with the following statement, Kevin. The world requires people who can lead and show the path to other people. People with such great qualities are called leaders. Not every person has the quality of becoming a great leader, and not every person with all the leadership styles and qualities. And, and, and you'll see what, what, what that means as we unpack it. It requires immense work and determination to act as a guide for other people. Um, and the blog highlights six leadership styles and qualities of great leaders. Leaders exercise great power. Every leader has his or own way of tackling an issue. And we have witnessed some great personalities and their best leadership qualities. Every leader has his own way of handling situations. And you talk about history. And, and it is that. So, so at least we've got the ability through history to understand those different qualities and behaviors, and you're seeing some distinct collective definitions around it. So I want to quickly take, take you through those six. So the first one is transformational leadership. This is based on, importantly, morality and motivation. And in this form of leadership, both employees and employees aim to uplift each other. And, and the leader focuses on building a trust-based relationship with the outcome being that of building and creating an inspired vision. So really good one to start with. But and just, yes. Craig, just on that note, morality and motivation, 
car's motivation is like taking a bath. You have to do it every single day. <laughs> oh, great you don't just have it. You don't just have it. It just yeah. it's not like I've got this pocket of motivation like secretly stashed and I I have a you know a tablet every day. Motivation, especially in that context, you know, you want to be transformational. That person is dedicated to actually doing it every single day. And that's why they become transformational. Yeah, that's that's great. That that really, really is. So second one is bureaucratic leadership. This is one of the oldest forms of leadership, Kevin, and it's a style focused on procedures and historical methods. And and irrespective of the relevant let me try that, irrespective of the relevance in a dynamic work environment, the systematic approach is based on routine tasks and power is therefore based on position not necessarily the best style. Situational leadership, this follows the idea that no leadership style should be absolute like that. It promotes flexibility of leadership and, and it can be a changed, it can be changed according to the situation that, that, that leaders are faced with. And it's adaptive yeah. style of leadership and one where, where changing of strategy happens in a dynamic way based on the situation and the environment. Mm. Charismatic leadership, these leaders use their charm and influence people to get the work done. And, and they have a high emotional intelligence, but are less concerned about the transformation of the organization. And it's very much focused around eloquent communication to motivate people. But it's really about being focused with their own ambitions. Yeah. The, the servant leadership uh, um, proposition puts leaders and uh, puts team before leaders. Um, they strongly follow ethics and associate integrity in their world, and, and they work for the development of their followers, believing that they are the servants first and the leaders later, and, and such a leadership style takes time to build and may not necessarily be good in situations with, with, which require quick decision making. Um, and then, and lastly here is, is quiet leadership. So such leaders lead by example and don't force people to do what they wish them to do. And they don't give orders, but they focus on their actions rather than words. And they prefer operating in the background and working without an ego. And, and, and obviously, because of that, they really need to have great listening skills. Yeah. Craig, you know, what's interesting as, as you, as you speak through this now, one of the things I, you know, you know, from even people I employ and people I work with, um, it's very difficult. Um, as, as someone who works in leadership, um, when you're applying leadership, uh, to the moment, to the, to the, um, to the people you're working with, um, it's very difficult to sometimes really know that, um, I really need to step into a transformational style here or I need to start, you know, step into um, more of a situational leadership. Um, and I think, you know, if people take the time and really start unraveling it a little bit and really sort of starting to notice what is, what is my go-to kind of style, especially when I'm under pressure, um, because that may not be as a situational leadership that is quite adaptable and flexible. Um, and I might step into like a, bureau, a bureaucratic kind of leadership style immediately because I'm under pressure. Um, and that sometimes, you know, as a leader, um, and it, that also comes with, with emotional intelligence, right? Am I being the best leader I can possibly be in the moment that I'm not having a great day or when I'm under pressure? And I think there is a really, and this is, I think, you know, to the point of COVID, you know, COVID has put so much amount of pressure on the, the, the type of leaders that we need in the world at the moment. Um, and, and if we don't, as leaders in the world, know how I'm going about doing it, I'm probably, I might be getting stuck and doing it in a way that's, that's really not beneficial and that, you know, is not really leading. And, and, and Kevin, I love what you say because the, the reality here is that you may well have a mainstream of leadership and that's the foundation of your leadership style. But yeah. leadership picks leadership is hybrid. You need to have the adaptability yeah. to firstly you need to understand the variables around the different types of leadership so that in that situation you know what you need to emphasize more in a leadership style than than another situation. Um really great point. And 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 one of the reasons I, I mentioned the likes of agency in this in this particular conversation is that they're phenomenal creative agency and advertising agency leaders in south africa absolutely some of the best in the world but there's this next layer that that need to 
be groomed and nurtured and mentored to come into into the future leadership roles. And this conversation hopefully can, you know, prick some of that interest and allow these youngsters to to really lean into the topic of leadership and get to understand that there are variable styles of leadership and that they need to actually be adept and at, at all of them, knowing when to use which and when not to use which, but obviously find their true leadership style and just like the equalizer, temper the others up or down. And also that, that you know, to that point where you're saying, you know, you, you've got to know which one to be using, but you also got to know when it's not your strength. And if it's not your strength, who do I rope in for help you? Because part of your leadership is also saying, okay, cool, that's just not, I'm not good at that. And, I, and I'm okay to say that I'm not good at that. And a leader that can do that, yeah, you know, is, is a really great leader. And, 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 and I like that. Can't. that. That's very much playing into the servant leadership style where you understand the key strengths of the team and you can leverage the strengths of the team to yeah. enhance your leadership position. A absolutely, Kevin. Yeah. Craig, so um, now that we have some idea on the different styles of leadership, what can you tell us about the top leadership qualities of great leaders? Because that, I think, uh, can be quite, uh, quite the topic and quite yeah. the debate. Yeah. <laughs> five, <laughs> five, five key aspects of, of um, leadership qualities that, that are referenced in the same uh, Unisquare blogs, uh, Unisquare Concepts blog. So it starts off with, with honesty and integrity. Um, these are absolutely indispensable leadership qualities and a rare part of work ethics that can never be compromised, Kevin. If only, you know, governments around the world structure their leadership around these things, we'd be in a very different world. Yeah. Um, if they don't conduct their, their, their actions on these moral values, they definitely won't be able to motivate and influence their followers. Um, Craig, yeah. on that point, honesty and integrity, guys, the quickest way, quickest way to measure someone's honesty and integrity, ask them how honesty behaves and how integrity behaves. If someone who claims to have honesty and integrity as their leadership and as a quality of their leadership, they will be able to tell you how it behaves. And if they can't, they're just using as a, a nice um, uh, intro yeah. in, in wording. Yeah, that's a great point. Like Behavior that. is key, yeah. Second is good decision makers. So, so leaders can't afford to be ever confused when they have authority to give uh, a direction, Kevin, because people look up to them. So, so they really need to be very good at decision making. They need to analyze the work properly and then decide the course of action. So it's about critical understanding, firstly. Um, third is accountability. So, so people look forward to the instruction of a leader as, as they can't escape from taking responsibility for, for, for their actions. So these leaders really need to be answerable for all the work that is done according to their instruction as well. And they need to understand the repercussions and consequences of their actions, an important point there as well. Yeah. The fourth, the fourth is empowering others. Um, a great leader empowers others. They should not only focus on self-growth, but also on the development of their fellow teammates. And the top leaders are willing to work for the betterment and empowerment of other people. And, and finally, here, uh, great communication skills. Great leaders must have good oratory skills. They need to captivate people through their communications, how they say it, what they say. And, and yeah, most importantly, it can't be one way projection. It has to be a two way communication. But most importantly for me, Kevin, is that great leaders need to be good listeners. They need to know when to speak, they need to know how to speak, and they need to know what to speak. Craig, you know, like, I mean, I, my, I've i been in my business now for seven, this is the seventh year of my business. And the I, I would recommend as a communication skill for a leader, listening skills would be the number one thing that a leader, a leader needs to um, uh, perfect, literally as, as, as something that you sit back you just listen because when you do, when you're actively involved, and that's why I always call it active listening, when you're actively involved with listening, you're listening for nuances, you're listening to the body language, you're listening to the nonverbal communication, you're listening to the language that's being used, you're listening to what is that thing that that person keeps saying every other day, you know, you, you sort of pick up, ah, this is a sort of a crutch word that this person starts using. Listening becomes, uh, you know, and if you, and if you just keep quiet and uh, and observe, um, and I, I, I'm so I mean I even do this at at at, at you know Bryce and 
and uh, you know people's houses you go for a bride a party and you kind of just sit back you don't have to say anything to anyone people invariably will tell you who they are if you actually start perfecting listening um, the person who's speaking the most half the time doesn't have all the information the person who's listening is the one listening and paying attention and also people think of listening as a weakness very often you know the one sitting in the background sitting there listening and not actually saying anything meanwhile that person is actually paying attention to everything that's being said and they're also formulating information to not just say the first thing that comes to mind so it. listening listening is a, a incredible incredible skill if you actually paid attention to it it's i love that so, so there's there's sort of five steps in in the co-create model that picks up between listening and asserting, um, and and what's really amazing here is step one is being passive. Step two is using the information that you can reload. Step yeah. three is with that information you become informed, and when you become informed you start to understand, and when you understand you discover. And therefore, your engagement fundamentally changes from the bias that you may have had in place to jump into, a, you know, a point of view, talking someone down or whatever it may be. But you get the opportunity to repurpose that entire conversation. Craig, but also remember, um, what is the one thing that every human being wants on the planet? Acknowledgement. That's right. So when you when you're sitting back from a leadership perspective and you just listen you don't you don't comment you don't have to have the answer or i, I like just correct someone when you and you, know, you even like i find it that i've actually done it with friends and you get you know you have that conversation and you want to just kind of interrupt them oh yeah yeah and this and if you just step back for a moment and just let them speak right you're taking the time to say i'm listening because you're important and that's the the, the sort of key thing that comes out for it uh, in, in my life and, and, and what's really great about that is that when you listen you suspend your agenda you yeah. then open to discovering and then you verify and you move the conversation into into another space absolutely absolutely uh, <laughs> I've, I've lost where we have where we are the conversation so the, last thing, the, you mentioned yeah. something about the traits uh, that great advertising and creative agent, uh, agency leaders. What can you share with us in that, this regard? Because, yeah. you know, from a marketing perspective, I think, uh, and like you mentioned, like we have some amazing marketers in, in this country and uh, they have some amazing skill as well. Very much so, Kevin. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's something that every single one of the points we've covered so far obviously applies to creative and agency leaders irrespective it's to leaders of any sector but but the the industry requires requires leaders with the greatest communication skills mm -hmm. and and that's a key priority in the agency world because that's what you're delivering for your clients at the end of the day as well so you know if you if you don't have that embedded in you as part of your dna in the leadership world you're not going to be able to move the business forward and meet the needs of of of, of your output for for your clients so the article 10 key 10 keys to become a great leader in advertising agency published on projectcrr.com um their marketing and advertising section provided some insights into into these traits kevin and they provide 10 key qualities that every leader must have in this particular communications advertising business so whilst these may be quite obvious to 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 many i reference the fact that they are young future leaders sitting in these agencies and they would really benefit from being aware of these traits so as they evolve their own uh, um, personas in in the world what is it that they need to understand to become future great agency leaders so the first thing is they need to they need to know how to prioritize properly they must know how to prioritize tasks and times where the workloads are huge and everything seems to be important which is a constant in, in, in this world of communications. They need to know how to distinguish what is urgent and what is important from the daily workflow and how that will impact on the business. Mm -hmm. They need to trust their teams and delegate. The, the leader really needs to know how they can extend their presence through the collaborators' actions and good managers that empower their teams will always make for a happier and, and more productive environment and employees. 
They yeah. need to make decisions based on hard data. They, you know, leaders must have a 360 view of the business. They, they need to be able to make coherent and beneficial decisions for the agency's health. And they have to constantly understand and assess the data that's at hand from the likes of timesheets, expenses, uh, workflows, and, and things like that. And, and with that information, they'll be able to identify patterns and the numbers generated by the reports on, on, on the respective clients and be able to, to take action and guidance from, from that point forward. But they also need to understand the importance of collaborative work. And this is probably one of the most important points in this particular industry. Coherence builds synergy. And, and if a leader wants good results, they need a team that works closely together. Teamwork minimizes tunnel vision, keeps the ideas flowing, and obviously helps cover for others' weaknesses. Not saying that you should always build teams to allow the weakest to thrive. You need to build teams to allow the weakest to learn and grow as well. Yeah. Give due credit to the teams. The leader must recognize the team's effort and acknowledging the work of others, that most definitely increases production and motivation. They need to prioritize human value in this area of digital transformation where AI is optimizing work times. Creative talent is still the most indispensable proposition in an agency. It's something that AI cannot do as well as people, Kevin. And, and the cardinal sin amongst uh, uh, leadership is not valuing people. It's fundamental to know each team member's workload, contribution to the team, and then assign tasks and avoid overloading the teams to what is really a big issue in, in agencies, the brain drain. Um, they need to quickly recognize business opportunities, must have the ability to, to lead from the front, listen to clients, and be empathetic. And it's essential that they recognize industry trends constantly, thereby not only offering innovative solutions and ideas, but also being able to optimize the teams to generate even better work. They must know that credibility is fundamental for the business, authentic behavior with integrity. They must be coherent with what they say and do, uh, which obviously is the basis and foundation of what credibility is built on. And yeah, they've got to create new, new leaders. So the current great leaders need to understand that the young leaders in their shadows and they need to be there to ensure that, that the employees are capable of holding the reins of a project and effectively managing in their own time. Agency leaders must therefore have the ability to train their employees so they can improve the business all while having no fear of internal competition. And they must be able to identify talented people on their team in order to know who to give their tasks to. A good leader creates leaders for the future. And finally, Kevin, probably the most important out of these 10, enjoy the job. In a world where creativity is the norm, it's essential to understand that motivation is key for good work environment and good work delivery for clients. The best way to motivate is innovating and creating extraordinary campaigns. Okay, you know, you know what I'm, what I absolutely love about what what you've just shared with us is um, things like empathy, things like uh, you, you know, knowing that what the human value is. Um, five years ago, when I started, well, when I was, you know, in my business doing one of the one of the core things I shared in a sales team environment in training was how to build confidence. And I, it wasn't part of my brief. I just, I was going to say, you know, guys, for you to be able to do sales, you have to be able to be confident at doing it. And confidence in itself is a soft skill. Today, we're learning that empathy is one of the strongest leadership skills that the world needs right now. You know, so for me, it's almost like I saw this as an opportunity five years ago where when you're really embracing the human element and getting humans to be amazing at being human, you know, your business flourishes, right? Um, so, you know, and just to see that it, it's becoming the trend of the world. I mean, the leadership, it's a specialist leadership program that we've just done with uh, Regenesis. Um, business school and you know we're specifically learning on the power of presence the power of um, uh, purpose what's your purpose what are your values how do you bring your values into it? what is your brand within your brand um, you know it's such an interesting kind of um, soft skill qualities that that leadership really is all about at the moment you know it's and it's, uh, that's why I'm so fascinated with it because it's, it's such a beautiful passion of mine but um yeah sorry yeah, it's it it it's a phenomenal space to be working. I, I think you're 
you're, you're quite quite privileged to have the chance to engage with so many different leaders across the world in in, in a continuum, and um, just yeah, just to 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 be able to impact, influence, and and shape and shift people and business is a great place to be. And, and you know, when you walk away and everyone starts knowing your name and you kind of go, oh, yeah, we heard about you and we heard about you, we heard about you. And you kind of go, yeah, that's because you're actually impacting people at a personal level. It wasn't that, you know, we went through a system and the system was great. It's you, you impacted people at a personal level. And that in itself is the leadership quality you want people to obviously share and move forward with because then they can also impact people at a personal level. Yep. And that's how, you know, um, that's why leadership becomes such an important factor. But um, Craig, as we near the end of the show, um, there are some key takeaway points of today. What can you share about the key takeaway uh, around leadership? Great, Kevin. Yes, yeah, so some excerpts from, from a, a few of the articles that we came across, and I've just sort of pulled from two in particular. The, the first one here is from an article titled, How Has COVID-19 Changed Leadership? published on, on wbs.ac.uk by Dimitrios Spurtonis. Uh, <laughs> published, yeah, oh God, mouthful. One uh, of those, 21 yeah. October 2021, and, and opens with the following statement, yeah. strategic leadership is needed more than ever to deal with the complexity and uncertainty organizations face in the wake of COVID disruption. On the back of these learnings, leaders must be prepared to evolve and change. They need to maintain a level of agility now more than ever as we sort of move back into what we're calling the so-called normal times again, with the normal times of coming with very different behavioral aspects to it. They need to embrace adaptive leadership. You spoke about that earlier. Um, but they also need to be aware of their own needs. And this is the one thing that, that COVID really has brought to the fore is It's, it's created a space for leaders to actually stop and think critically about themselves and what it is that they're assuming about their future for themselves and for the businesses that they're actually running. Um, and, and they might be able to actually check out and, and, and be able to pursue what they actually believe it is with the understanding that reflection creates space for their development and growth. So really great, great take out there. And the, and the final finding, Jack Kevin, is from a study that I actually came across on Taylor and Francis online.com. It's titled Ad Agency Leadership in the US, UK, and Australia A Mixed Method Analysis of Effective Attributes and Styles. It was published on 30 March 2021, and it indicates sort of four key points here that the best leaders are actually seen as people focused, collaboration driven, and future oriented. The top mm -hmm. leadership attributes are integrity, vision, and inspiration. Collaborative and performance-oriented leadership styles are considered the most effective, and there's a growing emphasis on the soft skills like empathy, adaptability, and active listening as core competent of effective leadership. Yeah, yeah. And those are the, the points for today. Fantastic. Craig, thank you. And guys, uh, I did mention that I have a wonderful key sort of takeaway from to uh, that I want to share as well. Um, I, and I'll actually, you know, leave it in the, the description box on the YouTube channel. So go and check it out. Uh, I'll also share it all over my social media. Um, and the question is the 30 questions that you can actually evaluate yourself as a leader. Your answers will help you pinpoint areas of improvement that will, may lead to better leadership. So a nice free giveaway and value add. I'm wanting just to share that with everybody. Craig, so um, thank you for today. I, As you can uh, obviously hear, it's, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about. Yep. What yep. do we have lined up? For? I'm ne I'm next week, we're going to be drinking. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we're going to have Pony Mali here. Founder and managing owner of Pony Wines um, should be joining us. Pony is is one of the 12 recipients selected from the rigorous process to benefit from Holland Insurance's Big Ads for Small Business campaign. And I had the chance to connect with Pony recently, and I can assure you that it's going to be a really great conversation. Amazing energy, wonderful personality to the show. And you know, hopefully we're going to have some samples of the wine to actually share and, and, and chat about. Fantastic. Guys, and that's uh, Lifestyle Marketing and Leadership Series happening with Kevin Craig every Thursday on EBS Radio at 12. Have a fantastic day. And uh, Craig, thank you. I'll chat to you next week.